This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Ford and Stellantis reported their Q1 sales for the U.S. market, and they're headed in opposite directions. Ford had a solid quarter, selling just over 508,000 vehicles, up 6.8% from last year. And it was hybrids and EVs that powered that growth. Hybrid sales shot up 42% to more than 38,000 vehicles, while EVs shot up 86% to just over 20,000. ICE sales, on the other hand, were up 2.6% to more than 449,000 vehicles. Ford still hasn't fully made up lost production of the Ranger and Bronco from the UAW strike. But as that plant gets back to full line speed, we should see dramatic increases for those two products in the second quarter. Lincoln also had a strong quarter, with sales up 31% to nearly 25,000 units. But on one ominous note, sales of the F-Series pickups fell 10% to about 153,000 units, even though the F-150 Lightning was up 80%, with customers buying 7,700 of them. But Stellantis had a rough quarter in the U.S., with sales down 10% to 332,500 vehicles. Like Ford, Ram saw a drop in pickup sales, down 15%. But refreshed versions of the truck are just hitting dealerships now, so that should help out sales. Dodge and Alfa Romeo were also down, but Chrysler and Jeep posted gains, powered by PHEV versions of the Jeep Wrangler and Cherokee, the Dodge Hornet, and the Chrysler Pacifica. Total PHEV sales were up 82%, and that could bode well for Stellantis as it gets ready to launch eight BEV models in the U.S. this year, including the Jeep Recon, Ram 1500 REV, Wagoneer S, Dodge Charger Daytona, and the all-new Fiat 500e. And let's stick with Stellantis here for a minute. Yesterday, CEO Carlos Tavares held a public online forum called Freedom of Mobility, which brought in five thought leaders from around the world, including Tavares, to present a wide variety of viewpoints on how to provide people with sustainable and affordable transportation. One of the things that Tavares talked about is the need to cut the weight and raw materials of EV batteries in half in the next decade. But some of his fellow panelists talked about getting rid of all vehicles, electric or not. One called for an outright ban on electric SUVs. Others talked about the need for a massive shift to public transportation and some want public policies that will transfer wealth from the global north to the global south. Tavares initiated this forum to influence governments with his belief that going all electric doesn't make sense in every region of the world, but we think he might have opened a can of worms that could end up threatening his own company. Okay, one more Stellantis item. Auto Forecast Solutions did a good analysis of its partnership with Chinese automaker Leap Motor. The two companies formed a joint venture called Leap Motor International, which is 51% owned by Stellantis and gives it the exclusive rights to manufacture Leap Motor EVs outside of China. It's targeting making half a million cars a year by the end of the decade. The first car will be built in Poland, where Leap Motor will ship semi knockdown versions of the T03, a small A-class car with a 36.5 kilowatt hour battery pack, a 250 mile range, and a price tag of 20 grand. Future plans include building cars in North America, though presumably that will be a larger car like Leap Motors C01 sedan. Tavares has said that tariffs won't save Western automakers from their Chinese rivals and that they need to learn how to compete. And one way he intends to compete is by making cars with Chinese technology. Intrepid's NeoVi Pi, allowing automotive engineers to interface, capture, and monitor vehicle data using Raspberry Pi. As a matter of fact, it's the automotive industry's first robust platform for Raspberry Pi, featuring Intrepid CanFD technology and Raspberry Pi compute module. The NeoVi Pi is designed for automotive environments, allowing use with relative power ranges and applications. In addition, the NeoVi Pi enables you to use the Raspberry Pi for compute while avoiding additional development to adapt to network environments. That makes the NeoVi Pi powerful enough to solve your vehicle network problems 
yet small enough to fit in your backpack. One of many intrepid tools used for developing zonal architecture and software defined vehicles. Global pickup truck makers like Toyota, Ford, and Nissan better take note because BYD is ready to slice into their market. It revealed a new camouflage version of its new pickup truck that's designed for regions with both left and right-hand drive vehicles. It doesn't have a name right now, but BYD says it's a plug-in hybrid with 100 kilometers or 62 miles of all-electric range, around 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles of overall range, and it will be available with an active suspension system. The truck could get its sales license for China this month and make its way to strong pickup markets like Australia and South Africa before the end of the year. And speaking of new vehicles, Renault pulled the wraps off the significantly redone Captur. Designers closed off the large grille opening and replaced it with a more horizontal body color element that flows into the front headlights. The rear features C-shaped taillights with the top line of the C extending onto the trunk door. Moving to the refreshed interior, your eyes are drawn immediately to the center screen, which is more tablet-like and mounted vertically on the dash. It has Google built-in as well as Android Automotive 12, but it also supports Apple CarPlay. The driver gets a new digital display that's up to 10 and a quarter inches. The new Captur comes with an entirely new electronic architecture as well, which allows it to add a number of tech features, including expanded OTA update capabilities and level two autonomous driving. Power will mostly come from a lineup of gas engines that range from three to four cylinders and mild to full hybrid, but there will also be a propane or LPG option. The new Captur will continue to be built in Spain and will hit the European market sometime this month. Autonomous startup May Mobility believes there's big bucks to be had in driverless rides. The company's CEO, Ed Olson, believes it can hit 60% profit margins once it can get rid of human backup drivers. But since it has to use drivers for now, Olson says its profit margins are currently in the low single digits. It currently only offers driverless rides in Sun City, Arizona, but it offers rides in three other U.S. cities with a human backup driver on board. May Mobility is taking a different approach than Waymo and Cruise, and instead of offering a ride-hailing robo-taxi service, it's pursuing contracts with cities and municipal transportation departments and views city buses as its main competition. EV startup Canoe needs to raise a lot more cash, but here's something that will turn off potential investors. The company spent twice as much on private jets for its CEO than it brought in revenue last year. According to its annual 10Q filing, Canoe spent $1.7 million to reimburse an equity firm owned by CEO Tony Aquila for private jets. But the company only brought in $886,000 in revenue in 2023. Canoe said its cash and cash equivalents dropped 20% from the quarter prior, falling to $6.4 million in the fourth quarter. All we can say is, it must be nice to have a board of directors that lets you get away with things like this. Well, this might be a blast from your past or just a chance to brush up on some history. Ford is making the Ford Times Magazine collection available to the public. Launched in 1908, it was originally catered to the company's operations, but it later became a consumer publication that featured articles about recreational vehicles, golfing, fishing, restaurants, and much more. If you go to the Ford Heritage Vault website, you can read or download over 300 magazines from 1964 to 1981, and it says it's going to add even more in the future. And don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours later today. We've got Charlie Chesborough, the senior economist with Cox Automotive, who has some surprising insights into the way the American car market is going. Are these just a one-time blip, or are we seeing fundamental changes in the market? 
Join John, Gary, and Mike Colias from the Wall Street Journal at 3 p.m. Eastern Time to find out. That's a wrap for this show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. When the elements are working against you, being confident in your grip on the road is what really matters. Bridgestone Alenza tires, improved acceleration in wet conditions.